Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Here is my first guide of the Fire Mage regarding the Antorus raid. I will first make a basic guide so people that raid normal and heroic can get familiar with how the Fire Mage works. For the people that want to have a more in-depth look, my advanced Fire Mage guide is coming soon. Let's begin with why people play Fire and why it's overall a spec that brings a lot to the table when it comes down to mythic pluses and raids. Well for starters, let's take a look at the strong points. The reason why Fire is very strong in Mythic Plus is because you can do insane amount of damage with Ignite. Ignite is a passive ability that takes Fire damage on the target and spreads to other targets. Casting for example a Fireball will help to spread Ignite. The damage that we can do with Ignite is also one of the reasons why Fire is good on fights with adds that are consistently next to the boss. Like High Command and Hezebel for example. The weak points of fire and almost every mage pack is that it highly depends on having the right legendaries. Having the legendary bracers is mandatory when playing fire. The bracers are right away the reason why, especially on pure single target fights, you depend on getting a lot of bracer procs. Going over the best in slot legendaries for fire. You will have the legendary bracers equipped almost all the time for every fight, so you can only play around with one legendary slot. Let's start with the ones that give you the most damage increase. The legendary waste is really good, giving you a mini combustion, ideal for progress fights. Shard of the Exodar is also your number one pick with the Bracers. But do be careful, there are some bosses in Antorus where Heroism, Bloodlust, is used very late in the fight, so this makes the shard less interesting. The legendary a lot of people talk about right now, Pyretics Incantation Cloud. It seems to be a match made in heaven when we take a look at the new tier 21 for set bonus. But that will only be good when we can do big damage with Ignite. This means on bosses where there are some sort of adds. Of course in Mythic Plus this is the legendary I always use. Having combustion ready on almost every pack is really good since high overall damage is what we need for that type of content. The legendary head is fine for Mythic Plus but not my favorite choice. It can be useful on Aonar. Prides is good for progress as it gives solid stats. Sifus can be very good on Mythic Plus but I do prefer the legendary hands. Best in slot tier pieces and how the 4 set influences our stats. The 2 set is pretty sweet increasing the length of our combustion by 2 seconds. The 4 set will give us 10% increased crit chance for 14 seconds during combustion. When reading this, it triggered a lot of people into thinking that we went back to how the Fire Mage played at the start of Legion by trying to fit as many instant pyros into that Rune of Power combustion window. Of course, I will explain this during the rotation part of the video. As for stats, crit becomes again a really high valued stat, unlike in Tumas Agaris with our tier 20 set where crit became very weak. Because this is more of a basic guide, I'll make it very easy for you guys. Every single piece of gear with crit as a main stat is a good choice. Same goes for your tier pieces, the one with crit will be best in slot. You can also sim your character like I do, this will give you a very accurate answer for your step priority. I'll leave a link in the description box for my basic guide on how to sim your character. What trinkets to pick? Here's a list of trinkets that are very good for the fire mage. Elemental's vision is the new legendary trinket, drops from Mentorus himself, of course, it is our best in slot trinket. Arcano Crystal remains very good. I still buy trinkets from the vendor in Taurus without success. Second best in slot trinket. Of course, it depends on how high Titan Forge it is. Arcid Catalyst Injector, a new trinket that drops in Taurus, a very good one if you might ask me. Third best in slot and definitely my favorite trinket. Tarnished Sentinel Medallion is still solid. Same goes for Terror from Below. Let's discuss talents. This is a basic guide, so the advanced stuff will be left out. Tier 15, go ahead and pick Conflagration, Pyromaniac is more frustrating than anything else, and Firestarter is for the more advanced guide that will be up later this week. Tier 30, Shimmer, no discussion, please learn how to play with Shimmer, it's very important for your damage. Tier 45, you have two options, or you go for the easy and chill talent in Cantor's Flow, or you can play with Rune of Power. Encanter's Flow will be used on bosses where there is a lot of movement. Rune of Power is very good on those pure single target fights and fights where there is not much movement, so keep that in mind. Encanter's Flow will be more forgiving, but damage wise it will be a bit lower. However, if you screw up your Rune of Power window, you will notice a huge loss in damage. 
Tier 60, I recommend Flame On. You can play with Alexstrasza's Fury if you have the legendary head. However, in almost every case, Flame On will be your go-to talent. Tier 75, Frenetic Speed, not much to say here. Tier 90, Living Bomb from Mythic Plus, Flame Patches Mythic Plus, only if the ads stay put. Unstable Magic for Raids. Tier 100, for some single target fights people take Meteor, but I hardly ever switch to Meteor since the damage increase isn't that noticeable. In this tier we take Kindling all the time. The fire talents don't require much changing, you will only have to change your tier 90 talents depending on the content that you do. Okay, now before we get into the rotation, let's go over a few guidelines first. First on your priority list, if you get a proc from your legendary bracers, start hardcasting that pyroblast as fast as possible. It has priority on everything else. Even during combustion, if you get a bracer proc, start hardcasting that pyroblast as it will do the most damage. I have a weak aura that shows me when I get a bracer proc, so I'll put that in the description. Second thing, if we do use Rune of Power, use it on fights where you know that there isn't going to be much movement or pre-move from mechanics. If you for example get a Bracer proc outside of your Combustion window, but you do have two Rune of Power charges, then obviously the most logic thing you would do is cast a Rune of Power followed by that Hardcasting Pyroblast. If you want to play it safe, go ahead and play with Encanter's Flow. Third and last thing, how does the rotation look during Combustion? Well, you should use all your Fire Blasts, followed by those instant Pyros. Right after you use all of your Fire Blasts, switch over to Phoenix Flames. In between every Phoenix Flame, you get an instant Pyro. After using two Phoenix Flames, one Fire Blast should be ready. After that, cast Scorch during the last seconds of your combustion. With all of that out of the way, let's start with the actual rotation. Okay guys, so in this part of the video, I'll talk and play at the same time, and I will show you the rotation. Um, right now I'll show you the rotation with Rune of Power. When Encanter's Flow is basically the same, but you don't have Rune of Power, you don't use Rune of Power. But it's your rotation basically stays, stays the same. This is the gear that I play with. Um, for Coraline's Burning Touch, I will um, discuss how you play with it in um, like the advanced guide. This is basically a mini combustion because every Scorch is a guaranteed crit. So at like the last 30% of the boss fights, you get like your mini combustion, same with Firestarter. But I will discuss that in the advanced guide that will be up um, later this week. So first up, um, for your rotation, it's pretty straightforward guys. You take a pre-pot and then you precast a fireball or pyroblast, it's up to you. Um, it definitely depends on, if you precast a fireball, you'll have more uptime of your pot. So let's go. So you cast your fireball and then you will see, if you get a heating up proc, then you don't need to use a phoenix flames. If you don't get a heating up proc, then use a phoenix flame. So what you do then is cast Room of Power, Phoenix Flames, you go into Combustion. If you get a Bracer proc during Combustion, obviously it has priority. So you use your Hardcasting Pyro, activate your second Rune of Power, keep going, keep going. After that, start casting Scorch. Hardcast that Pyroblast. And then you're into the Intermission phase where it's Fireball, if you get a heating up proc, it's Fireball, Fire Blast, Instant Pyro, Fireball, Instant Pyro. I use the second Rune of Power. Hopefully during your second Rune of Power you get a Bracer proc. And if you don't, then you don't get a Bracer proc. And that's basically it for the intermission phase. When you are getting close into getting your second combustion, your Rune of Power will be ready. So always make sure that you cast Rune of Power before you cast combustion. That's uh, that's a little bit important. Also, if you get a Bracer proc, um, like almost at the at the time when your combustion is ready, then you should use it. Like right now, you go into combustion. There you go. Be sure that you have some stacks when you go into combustion from your fire blast and your phoenix flames. And then you end with your scorches. As you can see right now because we have the we have the scorch icon blinking that's because of the belt. So that's basically it when it comes down to the rotation for your fire mage. 
Of course, when we play with um, Ikander Slow, it's the same thing, but you don't use your Rune of Power. It's just your opener is the same, but you go into your combustion way faster. That is all for this video, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I live stream on Twitch every weekday, so be sure to check it out. Links are in the description. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.